All the Lake is here, and to start off our extensive coverage of the 13th generation of processors, we're doing things a little differently. While I'm sure lots of media outlets are taking a look at the i5 13600K and i9 13900K, we will have those in the coming days. But we actually managed to source our own, very legit, i7 13700K, which I feel could be a strong contender for those wanting to spend a somewhat reasonable amount of money while getting the very best performance, mainly when it comes to gaming. But before we get into that, here's a quick word from this video sponsor. Andy, what are you watching? It's, uh, it's, it's not what you think. Wow, it's so big. Why, thank you. It's the new AOC AG493 UCX, 49 inches of pure performance and a refresh rate of 120 hertz. It's so fast. You can even do two at a time. What? You can connect two devices at a time and split the screen. With FreeSync Premium Pro, a 32 to 9 aspect ratio and a built-in KVM, you'll be finished in no time. Gaming, I mean. What, what did you think I mean? Get your mind out the gutter and click the link in the description to find out more. So the i7-13700K, codenamed Raptor Lake. I don't want to delve too much into the ins and outs of it because we have an unboxing video that goes through all of that from the other day. So that's definitely worth checking out if you want a bit more of a kind of deep dive into things. Now it is worth looking at the main specs though. So the i7 13700K, which I can't actually show you because we got it from sources outside of Intel, uh, but it is a 16 core processor comprising of eight performance cores and eight efficiency cores, of which as per usual, much like 12th gen, the performance cores all have hyper-threading, giving us a total of 24 threads. Now clock speed wise, with the right cooler to keep things under control, you'll be able to boost up to 5.4 gigahertz, which is a healthy 8% uplift from the 12700K's maximum boost clock. The gains don't stop there though, as the 13700K comes with 24 meg of L2 cache and 30 meg of L3 cache, or as Intel call it, smart cache. Now being a K-series processor also means that the 13700K can be overclocked beyond its rated spec, and that's something we'll likely look at in future content after we've kind of gone through all of the stock performance of all of the chips that are launching today. The 13700K keeps the maximum number of PCIe lanes at 20, as well as the base power at 125 watts. Though what is interesting is the PL1 and PL2 power draw has seen an increase from 190 watts on the 12700K to a staggering 253 watts. Now, as you'd expect, there's support through the 13700K for DDR4 and DDR5, but the accepted speed of DDR5 has now been increased to 5600 mega transfers a second, or megahertz, up from 4800 megahertz on the 12700K, and comes with the same Intel UHD 770 graphics iGPU built into the CPU. Now officially, Intel have been, I guess, pretty quiet in terms of performance improvement figures, and unlike AMD, they generally let the product do the talking in independent tests from the press, much like ourselves. So let's get into that with the i7-13700K, which does come in at $449 in the US and £499 in the UK, which uh, I guess puts it cheaper than the 7900X, but around $50 more than the 7700X. So as I said in my unboxing, I kind of feel that from a money point of view, it's competing with the unreleased and unannounced, though I'm sure it's coming 7800X from AMD. Now, because we're comparing the 13700K against previous generation Intel processors, as well as AMD's latest AM5 platform and the previous generation AM4, there's various test benches that we had to use throughout our testing. Though at any opportunity, we kept the components the same if possible. Obviously the big stumbling block here is comparing against AM4 based processors, which use DDR4, while AM5 12th generation CPUs and the 13700K all use DDR5. Throughout all of our testing, we used the same RTX 3090 Trinity GPU from Zotac, and for all systems that support DDR5, we used the G-Skill Trident Z5 Neo 6000MHz 32GB kit. For our 13th gen testing, we obviously had to create a new test system, and for the motherboard, we settled on using the ASUS ROG Maximus Z790 Extreme. In terms of software, we're using Windows 11 on the latest update, and of course, resizable bar was enabled. So, with that out of the way, let's get into those glorious benchmarks. Starting with 3D Mark Firestrike, and we straight away start to see the 13700K pushing ahead of the i9 12900K by just under 4%. But what's more interesting is that the 13700K has a lead over the more expensive 7900X by around 8%, while the physics score sees a slightly larger lead of just under 10% over the Ryzen 9 CPU. 
As we move on to Time Spy, it's a very similar story with the 13700K edging ahead of last generation's 12900K, though this time we see the 13700K sitting at the top of our stack, ahead of the 7950X by just under 6%. In PC Mark 10 Express, the Ryzen 7 900X fights back with a 3% lead over the 13700K and even sees the Ryzen 5 7600X around 2% faster than the new i7 as well. In Geekbench and taking a look at single core performance, there is a small 3% performance improvement on the new i7 when comparing against the Alder Lake i9 processor, though the 7900X still manages to push ahead, albeit by 2%, which considering the Ryzen CPU is 22% more expensive than the i7, I'll happily chalk this up as a win for Intel. Moving on to multi-core and again generation to generation we see some pretty impressive gains and on top of that see the 13700K pushing just under 7% more performance than the more expensive Ryzen 9 7900X. Taking a look at calculation benchmarks and starting with SuperPi where we see just under a minute shaved off when comparing the i9 12900K and i7 13700K. So a nice generational leap and coming in faster than both the Ryzen 9 7900X and 7950X, of which both are considerably more expensive as well. Taking a look at web browsing performance, and we see some pretty respectable gains again in favor of the 13700K, with an 8% lead over the 7900X and a 4% lead over the Ryzen 7950X. So at this point, it's not looking great for AMD. In Mozilla Kraken, AMD do manage to fight back, taking the top spots over the 13700K, but with less than 2% in it, again, for the extra cost, it just doesn't impress me much for Team Red. In Web Expert 4, again, we see some small gains over the 12900K of around 4%, but also see gains over both AMD Ryzen 9 CPUs, albeit of just under 1%. But considering the 13700K comes in significantly cheaper, it's another pretty big accomplishment for the blue team. In 7-zip and looking at compression, the i7 is only 1% behind the more expensive 7900X, though in decompression tests that gain increases to around 20% in favour of the 7900X. In rendering tests we see a healthy uplift in performance generation to generation, while the 7900X manages to pull ahead of the 13700K by just over 5%. They always say in the production world that time is money, so you'd need to decide if that 5% is worth the extra 22% in cost. In Corona, we again see a decent increase in performance when compared to the previous generation, and again, find that it's enough to edge ahead of the more expensive 7900X, while the 7950X furthers its lead, though we will be looking at exactly how that compares to the i9-13900K in future content, so you don't want to miss that. In Keyshot Viewer, that battle between the 7900X and 13700K is heating up as they both come in with very similar scores, which again, due to the extra cost from the 7900X, I can't not see the 13700K as the victor in this test. Moving on to everyone's favourite, Cinebench, and in single core performance, Intel have clearly worked on a few things, as the higher clock speeds really do see a large increase in performance over the last generation. Though more interesting than that is how the 13700K comes in 5% faster than the 7950X and 6.5% faster than the 7900X. Maybe they can make up for it in multi-core performance. Well, yes and no, as the 7900X slips behind the 13700K by around 5%, though the 7950X manages to storm ahead by 24%. But again, the i9-13900K could potentially rival that in our future testing. In V-Ray, again, it's a very close fight between the 7900X and 13700K, with the Ryzen CPU just coming out on top, again by a small margin of less than 3%. So at least from a value for money perspective, I'm just not seeing AMD as doing enough. Lastly, for our synthetic test, it's worth looking at Ada64 memory performance, and it's clear to see that Intel are still the champions when it comes to sheer speed and memory bandwidth, with anywhere up to 24% more speed than the AMD Ryzen 9 flagship processor. It does fall slightly behind in terms of latency, but with such a big lead for memory throughput, it's actually unlikely to even be noticed when looking at real-world usage. Moving on to games and starting with Assassin's Creed Valhalla, where we straight away see the various CPUs don't really make a huge difference in this title, but the 13700K does offer up better 1% lows overall compared to every other CPU. Moving on to Cyberpunk, and we see that the 13700K is topping our charts with a 2.5% lead over the 12600K. But again, those 1% lows is where it really stands out, 
especially as we see a huge 10% lead in those lows over the next best performing 7950X. In F122, AMD processors are clearly favoured here, though the 13700K still manages to keep up with the 7950X, only sitting less than 1% ahead in the averages, though the Raptor Lake CPU does slip slightly in the 1% lows. Far Cry 6 doesn't really see any benefit with 13th gen over a lower skew part from the Alder Lake lineup, and again, the competition from AMD just performs better overall in the averages and also in the 1% lows. Things pick back up in Forza Horizon 5 where the 13700K is pretty much neck and neck with the Ryzen 9 7900X, a chip that is considerably more expensive and does also come in 2% faster than the 5800X 3D. Horizon Zero Dawn sees figures that again are just too similar between every CPU, and margin of error could have a lot to play. Though again, those 1% lows is where we see the most significant talking point, pushing ahead of every other processor tested. Now we all know that Microsoft Flight Sim loves the 5800X 3D and its 3D vCache, and it continues to top our charts, followed behind by the 13700K by 9%. But with 13% stronger performance in the 1% lows, you're going to see a much more fluid gameplay experience overall. Red Dead Redemption 2 is another title where it feels like throwing money into a beefier or newer CPU both from Intel or AMD just feels a bit worthless between all processors tested, because you're just not going to notice a difference in this title. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is where we find our 13700K sitting at the bottom of our stack, albeit by less than 2%, and at 283 frames per second, I don't see anyone complaining anyway. Lastly, we have Watch Dogs Legion, where we see the 13th generation i7 pushing ahead by a small 2% margin over the 12th generation flagship, and again, some very strong numbers in those 1% lows. Okay, so coming into this, we and the general public had no real claims from Intel as to how things would be in terms of performance, but it's clear to see that the i7-13700K is pretty stellar when it comes to performance, especially when it comes to synthetic benchmarks, where for the most part, the i7 was battling it out between the more expensive Ryzen 9 CPUs. Now, if the i7 didn't come in with the best results we've seen, then it wasn't actually that far behind the more expensive processors. In terms of gaming, I mean, it's always good to kind of look at averages across the 10 titles we tested. It just gives us a clearer picture. And there's definitely an increase over the last generation where it's almost like, the i7-13700K is nigh on identical to the i9-12900K, which is quite nice to see. Last generation's flagship performance for less money overall. I'm happy with that, I don't know about you. Now, even when compared to the Ryzen 9 processors, the i7 managed to give them a run for their money and offer exceptional gaming performance across 10 titles. Even when compared to, let's call it, the gaming monster, 5800X3D. Now obviously pricing is a big thing and something that needs to be factored in. We can clearly see again that compared to AMD's Ryzen 9 series, which gave us similar performance, the i7-13700K just offers much better value for money overall at £2.42 per frame, though the 5800X 3D still manages to offer superior value, but for what could be deemed older tech, like having a platform that is made only for DDR4. Now in the US it's a similar story, with the i7 offering up better value than the new Ryzen offerings, but again the 5800X 3D still manages to offer a better value for money prospect. But I don't know, maybe that's what you get as part of the early adopter premium on a new product. Now when it comes to power there was no real surprise that the 13th generation would use more power, but it was interesting to see that the 13th generation processors use more power at idle though it's still around 50% less when compared to AMD. Now, as we move up to gaming load, we see a jump of around 15% when comparing the i9-12900K to the i7-13700K, which also means it uses more power than the 7950X while gaming, and dramatically more during our Cinebench R23 torture test as well. Overall, what that means for operating costs is that in the UK, at an average of 34 pence per kilowatt hour, the i7-13700K comes in around the same as the i9-12900K at less than half a penny per hour at idle, and around 6 pence per hour during gaming, and just under 9 pence per hour during a rigorous Cinebench torture test. And compared to the competition, well, AMD have it won here. In the US, based on 15 cents per kilowatt hour, we see the same pattern, though at a much closer margin. 
but AMD still have Intel beat across the whole Zen 4 lineup. Now in terms of temperatures, it's no surprise that more cores and threads equal more heat. And again, AMD seem to have the slight upper hand here, though during gaming load it's nigh on identical to the Ryzen 9 7950X, and it's only really in the Cinebench torture test where things are a little higher, due to the limits imposed by Intel, but still no real cause for concern. So I think it's clear to see that the i7-13700K offers up some pretty sizable improvements over the 12th generation, and rivals AMD's newest flagship as well, but for a lot less money. Now obviously, so much of deciding how good this processor is comes down to your particular use case, but it's pretty evident that for production, rendering, calculation, and web browsing, it's good. And for gaming, it's able to hold its own and offer some of the best value we've seen for the latest features. Yes, it runs warm, but so does Ryzen. And it now paves the question for me to ask how the i9-13900K is going to improve on it, because the performance is the best there is for the money. So can the i9 do better? That's what we'll find out soon enough. So definitely make sure you check that. For now, I think the i7 could end up being, I don't know, one of the best selling processors for Intel, where you get strong performance, good value for money, and all of the latest features that come with it. And if anything, it's gonna make AMD potentially reevaluate things and maybe even see some price cuts to compete, which is great for you. Who knows? Let's, uh, let's see what happens. For now, what do you think? Are you Team Blue or have AMD done enough to kind of compete? I think if anything, AMD 7000 3D cache versions, that could be their only saving grace to potentially fend off the competition. Do you agree? Let me know in the comments section and hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, then a like and a sub to the channel would be amazing. And if you love what we do, consider supporting us over on Patreon where you'll get access to all of our chart data, exclusive behind the scenes content and so much more. With that, I'll see you in the next one. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.